everybody. These notes are about function analysis. So if we take a look at the picture here, we know this is a function because by definition, every input has one and only one output. So when we analyze a function, we take into account a lot of different things about it. So the first thing we want to make sure we do is we want to read the graph from left to right, just like you would read a book. So when you look at the graph, you're going to describe everything moving from left to right. Okay, so if I take a look at it, I start over here, the function is going up, hits a point, comes back down, hits a point, goes up again, back down, up again, and back down on forever. Okay, so that's sort of what we're going to look at here. So when the function goes up and down, we call those increasing and decreasing intervals. So we have an increasing interval and a decreasing interval. Okay, so when the function is increasing, it means that from left to right, the function would be going up. Okay, that means if we take a look at this piece right here, the function's going up here. Now, that slope is not constant, right? We can see that that function is curving, but all those different slopes are all positive, right? So if I pick any place on this little section right here, the slope at any part of that section is increasing. It's a positive slope. It's going up, okay? So where are the other places that the function is increasing? Well, we decided here. Other places that it's going up would be here as well as over here. Okay, so I have three different intervals on which this function is increasing. Okay, so how do we write that? Well, we're going to write everything on an increasing, decreasing interval based on x values. Because what we've learned already is that the x is the independent variable. So all of those y values that I see on the graph there, they depend on those x values. So if I'm telling somebody where the graph is increasing or decreasing, I want to tell them based on the independent variable, based on those x values, okay? So if I read from left to right, I want to know what x values right here. One, two, three, four, that's a negative five. This is also important for me here. That's going to be a negative one. This is a three and this is seven. So basically what's happening here is that the graph is increasing from negative infinity, because if we take a look at this arrow, it is pointing downward, but those x values are really coming from over here. So I'm increasing from negative infinity to negative five. I'm gonna use a hard bracket on the negative five because I'm going to include that point I'm going to include that negative 5 in the increasing interval. Then I'm increasing from negative 1 to 3. And then I'm increasing from 4 to 7. Okay? I'm using hard brackets on all of those numbers because those points are included in the increasing interval. I put a U in between those intervals, that U stands for union. So I'm telling you that I have three different intervals. It's sort of like the mathematical term for and. So from negative infinity to negative five, union negative one to three, union four to seven. Those are where the function is increasing. Those are where slopes are positive. Okay? So now, let's see, where is my function decreasing? Where is my function going down? Well, it looks like it's going down here. Those slopes are negative, this little guy right here, and then at the end here, okay? So maybe you want to pause the video, see if you can write down the decreasing intervals. I'm going to put them here. I'm decreasing from negative 5 to negative 1, union from 3 to 4, union 7 to infinity, okay? Be very careful, guys. You want to make sure that you're using those x values, okay? Because it's very easy for people to use y values. Kids do it all the time throughout all this course, okay? So you want to get used to it now. Get used to using the x values of those points.
Okay, so those are my increasing and decreasing intervals. All right, let's take a look at the next part. All right, so here's our graph again. Now we're going to take a look at what we call extrema. Extrema is just the plural for extremum. And the word is built right in there. Extrema, those mean max and min values. Okay, so first we're going to take a look at the maximum points. Okay, a maximum point on a function is when you switch from a positive slope to a negative slope. Okay, because if you switch from going up to going down, you have to hit a maximum point right there. Okay, so let's think about it. Where does the graph switch from going up to going down? Here? Here? And here. Okay, so we're going to call those points the maximum points. Okay, now there's two types. So there are local maximums and absolute maximums, or maxima, I should say. So a local maximum is a point that is just high within that area. Okay, so where the slope switches from positive to negative, that's always going to be a local max. An absolute max would be the highest point. So is there a point where the graph switches from being positive slope to a negative slope and it's the highest point in the entire picture? All right. So this first one right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, is negative 5, comma, 6. This point here is 3, comma, 4. And this point here is 7, comma, 8. Okay? So those points are all of the maximums. All right? So now, which ones are local and which one's absolute? Keep in mind, all maximums are going to be local, and only one of them can be absolute unless they have the same y value. Okay? So which of these three points has the highest y value? It's 7, comma, 8. So the absolute maximum here is 7, comma, 8. Okay? Now remember, these are coordinates. These are an ordered pair, okay? So sometimes it's a little bit difficult. You don't want to confuse that with an interval notation, okay? The local maximums are negative 5, comma, 6 and 3, comma, 4. Those are the points, okay? Now, most of the time we write them as coordinates. However, there is a way to describe them with like a sentence. Okay, so uh, you'll do more of this when you get to advanced math as well as calculus, but a lot of times we like to say, let's just take the absolute one and write it as a sentence. We're going to say that the absolute maximum value is 8. Okay, so keep in mind, when we use the word value, we are talking about a y coordinate, right? We're talking about the dependent variable. The absolute maximum value of the graph is 8, which occurs when? When does that occur? That occurs at x equals 7. Okay, so that is the sentence that describes your maximum point on that function. All right, so let's take a look at the minimums. All right, so we're looking at extrema again. And this time, we're going to take a look at the minimum. So once again, I have two types. I have local and absolute. Okay. Now, minimum is basically the opposite of a maximum. So it's when we switch from a negative slope to a positive slope. Okay? Because if you're going down and then you switch to going up, you have to hit a minimum point right here. Okay? So where on this graph does it switch from going down to going up? So that would be here as well as here. Okay? 
So keep in mind that we're going to have just two minimums. Just two minimums. Now, where are they? Let's see. This one's at negative 1, negative 5. And this one is at 4, 1. Okay? Now, remember, all of them are going to be local. Are any of them absolute? Well, we know that negative 1, negative 5 is definitely lower than 4, 1. Okay, but the question is, can I find a point that is lower than negative 1, negative 5? doesn't necessarily have to be an extrema. It just has to be a point that's below it. Well, that's definitely true, right? Because if I look at this end behavior here, the graph is going down. So I'm definitely going to be able to find a point lower than negative 1, negative 5. So in this case, there are no absolute minimum points. The only two minimum points in this case are going to be local ones. Okay? All right, one last thing to talk about. The last thing we're going to talk about on a graph are zeros, which is another word for x-intercepts, or where the graph crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercept. Okay? So we're looking here for where the graph is going to cross the x-axis. So that's going to happen in four places, four different places, which is totally okay. And you always want to write these as coordinates. So when somebody asks you for the x or y intercept, you want to write them as coordinates. So the great thing about the zeros is that the y coordinate of all those points is going to be zero, right? Because that's the definition of an x-intercept. Where the graph crosses the x-axis, that point has a y value of 0, right? So I've got one at negative 7, negative 3, 2, and 9, okay? Now, where the graph crosses the y-axis, that only is going to happen once because if you're looking at something that's a function, remember that by definition, if you input something into a function, you should only get one output. So if I input a zero, I should only get out one value, and in this case, that value is negative four, okay? So if you're looking at a function, you should always only have one y-intercept, and it's okay to have multiple x-intercepts. It's also okay to have no x-intercepts as well, okay? So good luck, everybody. I hope you enjoy your classwork.